I want to talk about politics in the Philippines this morning. I know a few people are interested in, you know, oh, don't, don't talk about politics. This is relevant because it's where a lot of the common sense is lacking. Um, what you have is, let's, let's just take ERAP. ERAP's stuff is well publicized. ERAP um, was the president of the Philippines. He got ousted as such. Um, there was a few things that happened. First one I come across, which all seemed to snowball together was all these mistresses living in big mansions actually in the same area um, that didn't help him with the church because obviously the church doesn't um, support that sort of stuff well doesn't support it publicly uh, it may live uh, without it being an issue as long as nobody knows about it but it was actually uh, well published in the media the next involved this little game is bingo. Now, bingo in the West involves us with a big wheel spinning around. Philippines, it's a jar with numbers. Basically, what happens is you tip the number out, and it's basically the same game, but it's just a jug um, where you shake it and the numbers come out. Doesn't sound a lot, um, but it's illegal gambling. And there are certain gang members that control this on quite a large scale um, to the point that they were giving a suitcase of money to for to ERAP for whatever reason I'm not saying protection racketeering or whatever but I'll just say that they were given a suitcase of money um, <coughs> when things went foul is when somebody tried to assassinate the guy that was actually um, in charge of all this um, from a, a criminal organization because then he went public about the fact that Europe was getting suitcases of cash on a weekly basis these things did not do Europe very well now you may think well what's the point well he then become mayor of Manila in the, the last elections um, which now you might ask, well, how did he manage that when he was actually th um, ousted by people power in the Philippines? Simple reason. There's a transition in the Philippines from media to politics. If you're a 70s film star in the Philippines, you've got a good chance of being able to become even the president. Um, because the average person recognizes you. If, you. if you think about your politics where you are, in your country you are in, um, you may not know any of the politicians. I mean, I know in the UK, Cameroon, never heard of him before he become the Prime Minister, um, because I find most politicians in the UK irrelevant. Um, although they destroy the country on a regular basis, um, as people, they're irrelevant. They haven't achieved anything. Most of them are career politicians. They haven't actually done anything in their life except become a career politician. And myself, I don't think they should be allowed to do that um, because they have no real world experience, knowledge, or anything of use to bring to the table. Being a slimy politician that dodges questions and um, phrases, answers, which don't actually say yes or no, is a career move, but it shouldn't be. It should be that they have to answer to the public. So the point is, we do not recognize our politicians. Now, the only people in the US I can think of that are um, going to be different to that is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he got sort of ridiculed when he was sort of coming into power. And then... Um, from what I've heard, you know, I don't actually know because I don't live in his area. He's actually done quite a good job. So there's a little bit of it in the US, but nowhere near to the the extent in the Philippines. So this is why they get elected is because they have a connection with Joe Public. Joe Public sits and watches a 1980s. Uh, CRT TV, CRT being cathode ray tube, 
um, which is the old big TV, sitting there with his neighbourhood, having a cup of tea. And I know this guy, he's a hero. He's a hero, I've seen him on TV all the time. Fantastic, I'm gonna vote for him. That's what happens. It's as simple as that. There's no, <laughs> it's, it may seem bizarre, but if your education level is pushed right down to that level, that's why it's very hard to change things. Because this guy's a big superhero on TV. He's gotta be a fantastic leader. Um, very hard to change that mentality. Um, near impossible to be honest so that's why it's hard to get things to change in the Philippines um, I could go on about the legacy families uh, where basically they're so rooted into things um, you have multiple members of the family in various seats of um, political power along with different members in different parts of the government. For example, you have people in immigration, customs, uh, police, etc. So it's all interwoven to create quite a, a strong control over things. Um, there's not a lot you can do about that. A lot of people, the reason I brought this up, a lot of people assume you can just change things in the, in the Philippines. First thing I would say is that to change that would mean educating people to a level that they can see their vote actually causes these problems. Um, that ain't gonna happen. Um, it's the same in the US. I remember last last night, uh, Rich Collins um, tagged me on something to relating to gun crime in the US. There's an assumption I'm anti-gun. It's like I'm not. I'm anti-idiot. There's there's two different things. Um, when somebody says, "Well, more people get killed with um, hands and knives than guns in America," I'm just like, "That's your argument." I'm not being funny. I, I'm sat here in Spain. I don't even know where to get a gun. But I oh, my hands are here. And my knives are in the kitchen. Why do you think the the figures are that way? You know, that's an idiot argument. Because the fact is, less people have access to guns. So, of course, more people get killed with hands and knives. Those things need to change. People need to get educated to the point where they can actually say, well, that, the argument you put forward doesn't actually make any sense if that's all you can come up with. In the Philippines, the UK, whatever, you're going, right, how do we change the political system? Uh, the UK needs rid of a lot of its politicians that are simply useless. Um, my personal view is they should introduce a system where if you don't get at least 40% of a vote, there is no politician, regardless of what party it is because that would actually force either A, no political seat, or B, um, that people actually take an interest in politics instead of just sitting there complaining that the person is in charge is an idiot. So that's in education. So you've got to start at the bottom and work your way up. That's why when you see Filipinos that are educated, etc., overseas, there's no point giving them a hard time. They know things have got to change, but they can't change it. They, it's not, um, A, it's not up to them, but B, they know how big the task is. They can't just change it. It's got to be changed here and then up, not start here and go down because the mentality with the vote is your market vendors, your fishermen, etc., because they are huge in numbers. The engineer, that's on a ship in the middle of the sea doesn't have that power of change all those fisher people have the market vendors have this is why when Talise there, were, there was a alleged um, thing relating to the, the fishing the uh, the wet market I think it was just a, it might just have been a general market not, I'm not sure wet is like the fish market but <coughs> 
they moved the um, the market to sell the land on. They were hoping to make a small fortune by selling the land on to a wealthy developer. Reality is, that didn't go through. The market was moved so far away that, actually, that most vendors lost at least 30% of their business. So before the election, they moved the market back. Um, those vendors did not forget and they voted with it. They actually threw the mayor out, you know, he lost his seat. That is the power of the vote. That is what can change things. And it did there because it impacted the vendors and they voted with vengeance. Um, that's the sort of thing that needs to create a change. UK, we've got the similar mentality. Um, there's so many people, uh, your Jeremy Kyle people and watchers. They are becoming a growing part of the economy. Um, I won't say part of the economy unless it's actually just to eat everything. Um, but they're a growing part of the society, which are the uneducated, but because they breed and grow at such a rate, their power of the vote is increasing um, to a point where we've got what we've got, where benefits, etc., are becoming a problem. Um, excessive, unskilled, unemployed is a problem, but nobody wants to talk about it. Why? Because that's the power of the vote. So. Bear in mind, I'm talking like multiple countries here. We all have the same problems. So there's no point griping that the Philippines get it wrong. Oh, we're doing better. No, you're not. No, you're not. What the West is doing is it's constantly building up debt like no tomorrow. This is why we're now going into another recession. Um, what? It, yeah, and then it's like, no, uh, it's a double dip. Um, no, oh, we'll go back into another one now. No, you're just making it up. We we actually went into decline. There's no other way of putting it. You can make it all beautified with little phrasing and lies, but the answer is we went into a decline. We um, uh, The word escapes me at the moment. Uh, it's the word that politicians don't like saying because it means the economy is in retreat um, but I mean in the US there were bulldozing houses to avoid paying the taxes etc um, on the land etc that is not a case of just having a little dip or even the excess house growth when you've got homeless people you can't have excess housing what you mean if you built the wrong types of houses to accommodate the market um, but yeah so I just thought I'd do this one so you get a bit more of a perspective on why the politics are the way they are in the Philippines but also before looking at other people like, like they say uh, people live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones it's look at your own economy first and your own politics because you can see all the same stuff in it where things are bigger on the Philippines is it's in your face they do not care that you know um, it's a bit like the corruption. It's in your face. It's not hard to find. You get political people sitting in an office that aren't even that high up in the business. Uh, it is a business because it doesn't matter you're in a government office. If you're extorting cash, that extortion is a business. Um, we'll say, have you got a gift for me? That is normal. As such, that is where root problems are in the country. When you got to the point where the guy that's even a clerk in an office um, processing paperwork is expecting a payoff, um, you have a serious problem in your country. But it's got to start from the bottom and work its way up. Getting rid of those people has a ripple effect. And the more people see change at the bottom, the bigger the effect gets. And that's why I, I say you've got to start with the vendors because the vendors, the bus drivers, the um, people that make the world turn are the people that can create change. There's no point being the educated at the top because quite simply you don't have that power of change 
and it's been done that way on a, on purpose because the the fact is is ever, if everybody was educated to that level then this wouldn't even exist it wouldn't be a problem purely because you wouldn't work the same you'd all work the same way to make a system that actually functioned